Good morning, NBA fans. Welcome back to another episode of NBA Central. I'm your host, Big Bro. We got Big Steve-O in the building as well. And y'all already know how we get down. We're going to talk about the three games that occurred last night and the three games that's going to take place tonight. But first, y'all got to check out the intro. Thank you for tuning in to the number one place for your basketball fix, NBA Central, hosted by the Cognac Boys. Steve-O, how you doing this morning, my guy? Good, good. Can't complain. Just got some good basketball last night for sure. Yeah, and it's Friday, so it's payday for some of us. Some of us still broke, whether we got paid or not. You know what I'm saying? I was going all of the bills. You did. No, bro. <laughs> Be like that. <laughs> Especially when you got kids. They'd be like, remember the beginning of Married with Children? And all of them just came taking his money right out of his hand. <laughs> No, I don't know. <laughs> it, was same, it, was, it was the same way with the Jetsons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to keep up with them. So, Jesus. So last night, man, we had the uh, Philadelphia versus the Brooklyn uh, Nets, man. And listen, man, Brooklyn, <sighs> Brooklyn came to play basketball. So uh, did the refs. Man, what is going? We, I mean, like, bro, what is going on with the refs? Bro. We had Joel and B. Kick Claxton right into the manhood, and they was like, it's all, been good, ejected. it's all good. And then you right. had James Harden barely make contact with Royce O'Neal, and they was like, hey, man. You got to go, guy. You got to get up out of that family. I'm like, hey, what? You, you, hey, family jewels. <laughs> family jewels. Uh, it's, yeah. So we've been saying all season on the live calls with the Bulls or over here on this channel um, that the referees have been inserting themselves into these games and it seems like it's carried over into the playoffs whether you have what we what a lot of people consider an overreaction to the Draymond Green situation um and now you have last night where it you know it seemed like judgment calls and it, it almost feels like it was the wrong judgment calls being made but uh, what, 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 what do you make of this game last night man because Brooklyn had an opportunity to win the game or at least tie the game before his overtime but they threw the ball away on the inbound play. So what, yeah. what do you think of this game? I mean, I knew I, I just felt like it was one of those games like what we call yesterday. I knew like like I said, Philly got the talent. Like they all they always gonna have the talent. So what did I say? Brooklyn will have to come in and play flawless basketball, play hard, make shots. And for the most part, that's what they did. They just didn't make more shots than Philly. So Hey, and it, it just I, I like you said, I feel like the the calls, a lot of the calls was just it, it not it affected both teams' momentum in both type of situations. Like the, the um Nick Cla even the Nick Claxon getting kicked out the game. I was like, come on, bro, you gonna kick him out for taunting? Like it, it just a, it was just a lot with this game. Like this game could have really been good if, if they just let them play ball. And yeah, just let these boys play. And you know. Obviously, we both picked Philly to win yesterday, but I didn't want them to win in the fashion that's, that leaves it questionable. Exactly. Because um, like, yeah, because th that question is always going to be in the air that if those certain things didn't happen, Brooklyn would have the chance. Cause like, I, like you were saying, Brooklyn played a pretty solid game. Mikael mean, Bridges had twenty what twenty six point six rebounds, five assists. Shoot, he shoot nine for twenty six. Ain't terrible, but it ain't that good. But he shot six for seven for three. So that was a big day. Um. Cam Johnson did what Cam Johnson does, 17 points, five rebounds, four assists, six for 17. Struggled from the three a little bit, but did what he had to do. Nicholas Cass had a solid game. And then, <laughs> like I said, he got kicked out in that game. It was questionable for taunting. That was, I believe that was his second uh, um, uh, technical foul. That's why he got kicked out. So, um, it was just a lot going on. Like, Spencer did what he did, what he had to do. Um they bench actually contributed today for for a little, uh, just a slight little bit, but it, it just all in all, it, it just leaves a couple question marks, but not too many. Like we all like at the end of the day, Philly just came in and did what Philly had to do. Philly came in, won won the game, played yeah, well. Um, Maxi Maxi really was like after they took out um, mm. after they, they they ejected James Harden, who was having a yeah. pretty good game. Uh, Maxi yep, came was. in. Can't even lie. <laughs> Maxi Maxi was seamlessly inserted into the lineup and basically just carried them to a win because Joel Embiid was not having his best game. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, he was he was hobbled, getting thrown around like a rag doll. He too damn yeah. big for that. Bro, I seen him on the floor like five times last night. I'm right, like, bro, bro, you too big up. for that, bro. Get up. But yeah, I definitely agree with you with Maxi. And like I've been telling people around, like Maxi is probably one of my favorite players on that team. Like, I, like I was, I was an advocate during the time where I was like, man, you might want to start him. Like at, at the point, like because it was around the time with James Harden was struggling a little bit. So I was like, he just, he's not a bad person to put at the point. Yeah, more he probably is more of a combo guard, but. He can play make, but yeah, I was just one of those those advocates that Maxi was always that dude you always gotta watch out for because he's he's prone to go off. Yep, yep. So Philly took care of business last night, uh knocking off the Brooklyn Nets 102 to 97. And you know, a if in playoff basketball, you gotta overcome many obstacles, and sometimes the obstacles is the referees. Um, so I can't overlook the fact that Brooklyn just basically threw away their opportunity to at least tie the game. And uh, get an opportunity to win it in overtime, but hey, it is what it is. They down 0-3. They might go ahead and get their one win in the next matchup before Philly knocks them out in five. Now, then we got Golden State dominating the Sacramento King. I mean, like just dominating those guys at home last night. But there are no surprises there, Steve. Like I think everybody and their mama knew that Golden State was going to win that game. They only lost one game at home in all of the playoffs last season, so I didn't expect that to change last night. Yeah, like like I said, I I was just I called it. I said that I was like Curry gotta have a Curry game. Curry gotta come out and be uh Curry, and and, and that's what he did. Thirty six point six rebounds, uh, three assists, 12, 12 for twenty five from the field, six for twelve from the three. Um, they just did what I expected them to do. I knew they were, like I said they're against the ropes, and they know understand the situation. If they lose this game, it's gonna be a hard hold to dig themselves out of. Now you got a little bit of cushion. You got another game in uh, San Francisco, which is in a couple days or tomorrow. I'm not sure. But uh, you, you just got to ride with this momentum because, like I said, it's, this game can go, like I said, they can either get ugly or it can get real competitive. I, I, it's leaning to us. It's starting to get real competitive. So it might go six to seven games based on what I'm seeing. If they keep playing this good state way and on top of Draymond coming back, we know the history. When Draymond comes back, he play, he played like Draymond. That's what Draymond's supposed to play. So, um, you know, so I feel you. And, they, and defensively, the Golden State Warriors were yes. on point. Like, you held the highest scoring team in the NBA to 97 points. But that's that's more obviously that's more of a testament to Golden State's defense. But there's also Sacramento just missed shots. It's kind of they like did. that first game that uh, Atlanta had versus Boston. Like they missed shots. Like Kevin Herter going one for six from three. Davion Mitchell going one for five. Malik Monk zero for four. He was only one for nine from the field. Trey Lyles zero for four. He was zero for six from the field. And Terrence Davis was one for four as well as one for four from the field. So like. Their, their others did not show up yesterday. Um, right. And then even the starters struggled from three. Um, Harrison Barnes showed up and played really well. And um, De'Aaron Fox had his numbers, but they weren't really good. Yeah. Overall, they were 11 for 47 from three. You're talking about a team that's shooting, you know, 40% above on the season. And then they also missed a lot of free throws, 16 for yeah. 23. And then they have more turnovers. And then Golden State obviously didn't have as many turnovers as they had on the road. They only had 11 compared to 15 and 20 from games one and two. So you can tell that pressure, uh, Sacramento was feeling that pressure, but now going into the uh, the next game, I think they're going to come out looser. They didn't already got that, 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 that they laid that egg on the road. Uh, not that they're going to win game four, but they're going to play much better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just, ain't no way they're going to shoot 30, 23% from three again. It, it's just not going to happen. Um, uh, the Kings I'm talking about, they're just not gonna shoot that bad again, and that's really what it was. They weren't shooting that bad, and um, go to state defense was on that. So mm-hmm. it, it just was one of those games where, like you said, the pressure was on. They was not at. They was at the, um, going to state crib. Go to crazy. Go go to state's crib. Also gets loud. So. Hey, the crowd was in it. They was playing good ball, and and they got the win. That's what we. That's pretty much what we expected. Now, Steve O, we had the the most entertaining series so far it has to be Phoenix versus Clippers, man. Like Thanks. even even with Kawhi out, and you know, we laugh and make our jokes, but you know, good get well soon, Kawhi. We just gotta say that way too much, my guy. Like 
is the playoffs. The whole reason, yeah, for, the, the whole reason for Kawhi missing games through the regular season was so that he could be ready for the playoffs and healthy for the playoffs. And here you go. Now you're not playing because your body not used to playing basketball games every two days because you don't do it during the regular season. My God, like, come on. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, um, uh, Van Gundy, uh, Stan Van Gundy was kind of pointing that out, pointing that out on the broadcast yeah. last night. Like, hey, maybe uh, the reason why Sacramento had players that played 70 games and players that are, you know, averaging career high points and so on and so forth and the players that are staying healthy is because they actually practice and they actually play and they actually get their bodies uh, that Used repetition, to yeah, that repetition that's needed. Uh, and and so for me, it just doesn't make sense to have Kawhi sit out half the season only to have him injured, submit the game last night. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, this is this series is is entertaining regardless of who is on the floor. Uh, you had a great game in which the Clippers still had a chance, even though they were down by like eight nine points with like a minute to go. They fought yeah. down to the last buzzer, one twenty nine one twenty four. Clippers with the I mean Phoenix with the win. We called it yesterday, but well, mm -hmm. I called it. I think I called it as a Phoenix you called it. There. But hey, it was a great game. What's your, what are your thoughts, bro? My thoughts is get Norman Powell in the Bulls jersey. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but for real, like. It, but Norman Powell's always been one. I always been like a secret friend of Norman Powell ever since the Toronto days. Like he's just a bucket, and he did. He do. He's the type of player that he's like a Drew Holiday, not style, but he just any team he's on can use him. Any team. So um, I always like Norman Powell. Russell Brooks showed up today with thirty points, eight rebounds. I mean, eight yeah, eight rebounds, twelve uh, assists, twelve from. Uh, I mean, 11 for 23 on the field. It's, a, it's Westbrook, so you know he wasn't going to shoot the greatest. But uh, oh, 11 for 23 is incredible for Westbrook. Like, that yeah, that's crazy. what I was saying. That's not, that's not actually Sonic for him. So, yeah. So, like, people showed up. Um, uh, I, I think we could have got a little bit um, more out of the bench as a whole. I mean, yeah, Bones, Highlands, and Trey Mann did uh, deal with exactly what they were supposed to do. But um, I, I – where has Covington been at? I feel like we never seen much Covington, and Covington is could be a glue guy for them. He's a typical three and D guy. He, I, I just feel like he could help um, a little bit more, especially. I mean, defensively, I feel like they're already like I already told you. Like I feel like they're def defensively better than Phoenix, but with Pat, uh, with not Pat, but with uh, Robert Covington on the bench. Not getting that many minutes as he should be. Like he only played three minutes last night. I he, mm -hmm. he need to bump that up to at least ten minutes. You know, and here's the thing. First of all, Norman Powell, Jesus, forty two <laughs> points, my guy, forty two. You are a a bucket getter, and R Russell Westbrook. The 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 world owes Russell Westbrook an apology. Uh, apology. Not I'm just a, say that again, Kev. The, the world owes him an apology, bro. And it's not just the fans, right? Because we're definitely hard on Brody. Um, but the NBA world is owes yes. him an apology. Like these teams that have been passing him around like a uh <laughs> like a whatever you wanna, <laughs> like whatever you want to say in that analogy. <laughs> yeah. It did uh, you know, him him being cut by the Lakers as if all of their problems was on him. Exactly. And, uh, you know, and him not being picked up through the waiver wires um, because people just figured that it was his fault that the Lakers was bad. This man is proving everybody wrong, so shout out to him. But the story of the night is old light skin man. Devin Booker went out there and dominated 45 <laughs> points, 18 for 29 for the field. He also had three steals, three assists, two blocks, six rebounds. Like, he was engaged and focused, and that's why I felt like Phoenix was going to win last night because on top of all of that, you got Kevin Durant like, oh, yeah, I got 28 points on 8 for 15 from the field. It's very efficient. Nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> like, they're, over, they're overcoming Chris Paul's just terrible series overall. My man was 5 for 18 last night, 1 for 8 from the field with yeah. only 7 assists. He just had a 7 assists and 3 turnovers. Like, Chris Paul is, is really on his Not last it. legs. That's yeah, real. he's on his last legs. And and it doesn't matter because getting Kevin Durant is enough for them to overcome whatever I, in, in, in deficiencies that uh, or, or deficiencies that Chris Paul has. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I just feel like like not not that the game plan is any different or any special. I just would uh, like them to use Paul in a pure playmaking role because I just feel like at times they were like, we got to get him some shots so he could get going. Like, he just ain't going to get going. So, like, it was still – it was just – like, there was definitely – in the last few games, there's definitely been times where he did some passes. of like, ooh, okay. ooh, Chris, I ain't seen that since Nova days. Like, just let him play make, Monty. Just let him play make. Like, he's one of the greatest point guards we have ever seen. Let him be a point guard. We don't need him to score – He's never really been a scorer. He's always been that person where we've always said when he wants to score, he can't. So yeah. um let the chip let like let the game come to you. Like it's not, I, he's at the, the way he's at in his career, the age he's is. He just needs to let the game come to him and just be that pure playmaker. So coming up next, we got three teams in action tonight. We want to know if the Atlanta Hawks or the T Wolves can avoid going down 0-3. And then who has the edge in the Cleveland versus uh, New York series? But yeah, man, if this Phoenix uh, versus Clippers series is definitely the most entertaining so far, uh, with or without Kawhi Leonard. To see Norman Powell go out there and perform the way he did last night was definitely that was great to see. Definitely great. All right, y'all. So y'all already know how we do. We're gonna predict tonight's games. We first game up, uh, Steve O. We got the Atlanta Hawks holding on to hope. Can they win at least one game versus the Boston Celtics? Nope. I just don't see it. In case y'all just listening and ain't watching, he shook his dread side to side. <laughs> like <laughs> I just had, I had to break the picture. But I like like I said, like I've been saying for every game, like it's just gonna take Trey Young to be Trey Young. And like we have yet to see that Trey Young. So I'm not gonna bank it on today there. I'm gonna see it. So like <laughs> I, like I just the team just not good enough they're just not like and I, it, during the playoff play-in situation i think we all knew that I, we knew they was gonna come in it's gonna be a tough series to either be competitive in so like i'm not gonna say they can't get one win but i ain't gonna bang it on today i don't know where they're gonna get it but if it is the time to get it be today but i just don't think they're gonna get it done yeah they they need to win today otherwise they're gonna be in the same situation brooklyn's in where they can probably win game four uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like Boston is also in the same mentality as, as Brooklyn. Like, hey, we got to put our foot on their necks. And they're going to have to win ugly uh, because just like uh, Philly, just like Brooklyn did last night to Philly, they're going to muck up the game. They're going to put some bodies on the floor. They're going to be aggressive. And at when you're on the road in the NBA playoffs, the referees definitely tend to lean toward the home teams. So yeah, the, uh, swallow that best whistle. So you're going to have to overcome that, but I think Boston has the talent to do so. So I'm picking Boston to win this game tonight. Uh, I'm not sure Atlanta. I'm having Boston as well. And then we got the Knicks versus the Cleveland Cavaliers and Steve O. The Knicks do not want to lose this game. They don't. Because in a series like this where the teams are pretty evenly matched and that team that's down 2-1 to one goes into game four, Man, the the you gonna have to win it to make it two two. Because if you go down three one, you don't want to be that team that's in danger of going down three one. Uh, so the Knicks got they work cut out for them tonight. But I'm picking them to as opposed to what I did yesterday with uh the Phoenix and the Clippers. I think the home team is gonna win tonight. I'm give give me the Knicks to win tonight's game. I'm gonna just say it in the Stephen A. I'm gonna say it in the Stephen A. Voice. We're going to New York. We in New York. <laughs> It's different from Cleveland. So we coming in to play. The Knicks coming in. R.J. Barrett. Julius Randle. Quickly. Y'all know what to do, man. <laughs> but no, nah, for real, though. They in Brooklyn. They, I mean, not Brooklyn. They in New York. Um, Like I said, Madison Square Garden is different. And the Madison Square Garden in the playoffs, whew, that's a movie. So, like. It, it, it's going to be a tough, it's tough. It's tough to win a playoff game in New York. They are thirsty for playoff wins. They are thirsty for anything, playoffs, any big games, they thirsty for it. So you already know the mentality of, of Tom Thibodeau and that whole Knicks team. They know they down. I mean, they, well, not down, but they know they have the chance to even to, to put themselves ahead in this series. And they're going to try to do that. It's, it's, it's almost like towards the end of the series. They knew what situation they was in, and they locked down the position they were they wanted, and they got it. And I feel like they decided they're gonna do it tonight. Um, I feel like last game, like 
I okay, I expected them to like Cleveland to get used to the physicality that the Knicks brung, but I didn't expect them to get used to it that fast to the point that they kill them because they well, it beat. Wasn't, it wasn't the physicality; it was Darius Garland just going nuclear. Yeah, that, like, that too. dude was hitting everything, bro. Yeah, that was, was true. Like Donovan Mitchell didn't even really have to show up last game. Like he did mm-hmm. his thing. I think he had thirteen assists or whatever. But like my guy Darius Garland was out there playing out of his mind, and that was the difference. Uh, mm-hmm. in that in that game at least, I don't I don't see it happening again. And so and you had uh, what's his name playing really well? Is I can't think of his name. Uh, dark skinned fellow that was on the Brooklyn Nets who got traded to them. Uh, uh, uh to Levert, Karis Levert, Levert. Karis Levert. Yeah, Karis he Levert. had a strong game as well. So yeah. you know, I think. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. But I was just saying, like RJ, we can't have that little fourteen points, bro. Like, like I get it. Like you, then you're not the focal point. Even though, like at one point, you were you're not the focal point of the offense. But like, you got to find a way to get at least twenty because it's just the way the way the the, the way Cleveland is set up. Like just like you said. It, they have the talent where sometimes Donovan don't have to do much. Darius can go off. Karis can go off. Hell, Isaac Kokoro could possibly go off. Like, you never know. So it's like, you just got to be ready for everything. Like, every single thing. Like, yeah, I kind of want to, I hope, like, in this series, like, we all notice that, we all, not notice, but we all know that Tom Thibodeau is a defensive coach. We're going to see if he still got it. Because we need to see a, a couple different things based on what Cleveland brings, because they can they can switch up a lot of different ways. That's true. All right, so we both picking the Knicks, or I'm picking the Knicks. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be different. Pick Cleveland. Okay, to be different. Yeah, we, hey, whoever goes, whoever wins this game, definitely gonna try to go up three one. You feel me? It's gonna be something to see. Now, the last game of the night is the Denver Nuggets. Versus the Minnesota Timberwolves, and it's the same question, just like in that Atlanta series. Does Minnesota even stand a chance right now? Carl Anthony Towns hasn't been showing me anybody much. Uh, Rudy Gobert is just limited. Uh, he, he does what he he does what he does on defense, but he does he really doesn't do much on that side, in my opinion. Like he might change some shots at the rim, but he's not getting like five six blocks, and then he's not an offensive threat. And Anthony Edwards finally had a breakout playoff game uh, in the mm-hmm. last game. He went crazy. Uh, do they have what it takes? The, the series swift swings back to Minnesota. They're a decent home team. Do they have what it takes to take at least one from Denver tonight at the crib? I feel like it's possible, but it just all goes down to they all got to play good <laughs> together at the same time. So it was like, like, like you said, Anthony Edwards showed up with 41 points, I believe, but Cat was a no show again, and like you said, <clears throat> Rudy is pretty limited. But I would just try to like I watch like even like even though I watched a lot of Utah games, and it was just like sometimes he just wasn't getting the ball, and it's like I he don't know if he, now, that he gets the ball now. It's like I don't know if he's not used to it no more or what it is. But it's like, bro, you're seven two. I don't know, half the time, all you got to do is turn around and lay the ball up. Just be a little bit more aggressive in certain situations. You'd be cool. And just give us a solid 20. Like, if you give us a solid 22 points a night, 10 boards, three blocks, and then Cat decides to show up, yeah, they could get a W. Yeah, that's a lot. Asking a lot from Rudy. I'm about to say, that's definitely asking a lot. Like, my man can do that on 2K because, you know, you play through we, the big we got the mindset to do such. <laughs> right. But I, I don't see that happening in real life, man. I got Denver going up 3-0 tonight. Um, but I can see Minnesota making it a dog fight like they did in the last game. But I, I, unfortunately, I feel like the teams at least know that the um, you know, that the teams that are at the top, the one and two seeds in both conferences, they want to put themselves in a situation where they're not playing six and seven game series. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why Memphis, you know, we'll talk about that tomorrow, but that's why Memphis got a big game against the Lakers uh, to try to go up 3-1. But, um, yeah, I see Denver uh, going up 3-0 tonight as well. I, I, I don't see Minnesota winning. Yeah, I see the same as well. Like, just going and get them out the way. Like I said, they just match up way better than them. They got the size, the depth, Denver do. They playing the better. They're, they're the better coach team. Yeah. Um, they The core has been around each other the most. And Joe, we might see Jamal Murray might be back. Yeah, according to the last game. So, yeah. like, he, like, 
I know he, he always have these little iffy and all games, but a 40-point game, hey, that's what they needed. But yes, I, I won't even, they didn't even need 40, but though, that helped for sure. So if if this is the Jamal we're going to go see, he's going to see the, uh, tonight, hey, they it's going to be 3-0 real quick. Yes, sir. All right, then, man, we're going to get up out of here. Y'all already know we got to go to work and all that good stuff. But we rock with y'all every morning for the prediction. So don't forget. To put your comments in the in the comment section down below. Go ahead, we want to see what y'all gotta say. Let us know what y'all think about last night's games. Let us know who y'all think gonna win the games tonight. Um, don't forget to follow any of the other central family shows, uh Thanks. channels. We got NBA Central, we got Chicago Bulls Central, Chicago Bears Central, Chicago Sky Central, Chicago Cubs and White Sox Central, and we got the Cognac Gang with the Cubs, Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. So we definitely appreciate y'all for rocking with us every single morning. We're going to see y'all tomorrow on the live, live prediction show. Live. Yes, sir. It's going down. We don't even know who's going to be with us. You might see Uh C-Dub. You might see Bobby. You might see Hayes. You know what I mean? It might just be the two of us. But either way, we're going to rock with y'all tomorrow. Peace. Thank you for tuning in to the number one place for your basketball fix, NBA Central, hosted by the Cognac Boys.